Alright, so are we starting the actual session or are we saying an actual hello to people who are watching this thing? Um, hi people, let's start. Yeah, okay, fine. Hi people, we exist, let's start the game. <laughs> really? Hi people, we're not dead, turns out. We're not gonna talk about the fact that it's been a whole year since the last one and now we're back? Yes. Come on, it's it's land, and year. welcome to the game. <laughs> Anyways, we are yes, here. Anyways. We are here. We are of people, and we are here to play some D and D. And I'm ready to break some people. This one's gonna be relatively tame in comparison to like the next act, which is the next one. But yeah, there's still gonna be some like nice world building, and I'm excited for you guys to see it. <laughs> All right. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get the. First, I'm gonna take another sip of water because you guys make me laugh so hard I wheeze and my throat's just like. Ugh. I'm serious about that warning label. I know. There should be a warning label. Bliss, let's put a warning label on it. Let's make one. <laughs> <laughs> warning: Popcorn Gallery is toxic. All right. <laughs> warning: Don't drink water during session or you will drown in your own house. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's move on. Moving on. It has been one year. One year since we first saw the carnival. One year since our adventures lost, adventurers lost their dearest friend. One year since their lives changed forever. Through the seasons, the children of Salem learned and worked as much as they could to prepare themselves for the next Hallow's Eve. Cyrus got his act together enough to learn new songs and dances, though he prays he will have legs in order to do them. Alexander worked hard every day in order to strengthen himself to the point where he could beat Oliver in a foot race, even though Oliver didn't always try her hardest. Emily joined in on Alexander's training sessions, especially secret ones where he taught her where he taught her swordsmanship and how to handle weapons. Douglas and Chester joined Matthew in magical and occult research both learning they possibly could, everything they possibly could about vampires, the Fortress of Deva, and any mention of the Hollow Sisters in any book they could find. As the air starts to chill and the leaves begin to change, they could feel the pits in their stomachs harden, until finally, come to the night, the night we've been waiting for. All Hallows It's now two hours before sunset, and the New England air is crisp and chilly. Before last year, you'd say that it would have been enjoyable, but not anymore. Not after what you've endured. After sneaking out of your respective homes, you'll find yourselves back in the forest where it all began, per the instructions you were sent via bunny rabbit. There is a tenseness that could be cut with a knife. But whether that's from the fact that it was Hallow's Eve, or from the trauma you suffered, or it is because of the journey you're about to embark on, don't know. What do you do? Hmm. Alexander's just... He is looking around at anything, just anything unusual, because of a little something called pattern recognition. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little something. Cyrus is looking a little bit more wobbly, like he's kind of have a kind of got a bit of a tiz or something, if that's a word. A tiz? A buzz. He's oh, a little okay. buzzed. How aware do you think he is of things? He's he's aware, like he's still conscious. It's just his. Balance isn't exactly on. He's been drinking a little. Okay. I'm just making. I'm just trying to sort of gauge, like if we need to make checks or anything. That's all. Like it's not. He's not completely zoned out. It's just he's not all the way there. Yep. Okay. All 
Uh, Emily is alert, uh, but you notice her fists are tightened, and she's just, she's kind of like a deer and just listening for anything out of the ordinary. All right. Matthew, Douglas, do you want to do anything? Matthew is, picks up uh, what looks like to be something he is smoking. It is on fire. It is vibrantly on fire. <laughs> and Douglas, Douglas is cradling Chester as close as he can to his face. And every time you think he's about to open his mouth to say something, it's just so he can take in a little gasp of air. Aww. Matthew's fire, meanwhile, has grown 10 feet high. It's doing really weird things. Nice. You all seem so tense. I thought this would help. And it turns out he's just using thaumaturgia. Aww. Aww, Matthew. He, he's sweet boy. Uh, Alec, uh, Xander looks towards Matthew. I'm not tense. I'm alert. Mm -hmm. I'm so alert that this isn't even a cigarette. This is actually a stick. <laughs> Matthew throws it behind him and it explodes, revealing that that too was thaumaturgia. <laughs> Oh yes, I am also completely aware. I am so aware that everything is wobbly. It's wobbly, it's wibbly wobbly, wimey wobbly. <laughs> uh, Emily walks over to Cyrus and gently tugs on his collar. <laughs> Are you drunk? Oh, no, don't be ridiculous. Don't be, that is preposterous. I am, I am, I am completely, okay, maybe a little. She is pinching her brow, proceeds to smack Cyrus upside the head, <laughs> and then walks over to Douglas and puts a hand on his shoulder. <laughs> it's okay, Douglas. <laughs> It's okay. We're all here. We're all together, and we we, we have a plan, right? She Everyone, eyes Matthew and Alexander. Everyone, roll perception. Ah, snap! <laughs> I forgot to load my character page. Oh, Hold on. It's fine. It's fine. Oh wow! I haven't thinking of what on perception. Fabulous. <laughs> Alexander uh, Jefferson. Ah! Woo! Okay, well, that was the first roll anyways, but... Might want to... My awakened mind perceives everything. Uh, oh, that's not too bad. Uh, Except here. Like Claire eyes. Oh, thank you. That okay. That makes me feel better that I suck. <laughs> okay, so... Something. I wonder why uh, yours is... I wonder why yours was an advantage. It was it because of the... Yeah, it could have uh, been a previous wanna... roll. I turned it back to normal, but it probably yeah. was from last time we were uh, playing the game. I probably had, uh, I was probably on advantage for my I'd last roll. I just yeah. never turned All it right. off. All right, yeah. I fixed it. So either, either way, we'll still take the oh, first okay, roll. Yeah. I think the 20 was the first roll, so you see everything. Yep. <laughs> Should I have rolled with a disadvantage? Oh, no, you're fine. You're fine. You're, you're only buzzed, not full out drunk, so you don't have to worry about disadvantage. And, and I'm distraught and worried about Douglas and everything, and it's like, we have a plan, right? We have a plan, right? I'm a little distracted. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, um, uh, for Douglas, Cyrus, and definitely Matthew, because Matthew was all-knowing, um, you see a nearby bush begin to shake as if something was moving in it. And out from the bush pops a rather large red salamander. Mm. Um, right about there. It's, it's small. Oh boy. It's small on the board. Ah! <laughs> that, oh dang. Hey, um, that wasn't this. Forever. That wasn't a big boy. <laughs> Would I? Well, just so we uh, can ever. Uh, I think they fixed, fixed it. Ah! I can imagine. I can imagine if he was that size before. I can imagine Chester was like, "We can take him," and then he goes big. You can take him. <laughs> <laughs> um, Would Matthew know baby. anything from what his? Uh, guardian would have told him from being in the mountains, or what would I roll for that if that was nature? If you wish, if you wish to roll a nature, you may. Okay, oh, but this God. is this is not based on the idea of being a nature expert. I'm not proficient. It's based on if my guardian would have like said something about this. You're fine. I get you. I, I might I can, have. I can do nature. Actually. I can roll to support you. Oh wow. Right. Oh dang. 
Never mind. Finn, <laughs> oh, Finn, you might want to turn. Y'all turn off the advantage. I think it's up at the top. Uh, it's uh, yeah, I don't the thing. I've been clicking on normal very explicitly, and my page says I'm on normal. Okay. That's weird. Oh, that's weird. Let me, give me a Damn, second. Let me look at you. Yeah. So we'll. It's the other, first roll, we'll so. just, Yeah. Otherwise. Oh no, I'm I'm on normal as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's weird. Maybe it's something to do with the warlocks. I don't know. But either way, I'll still take the first roll. Both uh, Matthew and Douglas, this isn't the season for salamanders. I am just checking. Everyone else has seen the enlarged red frog, right? I haven't got a clue. But, oh, by the way, this is not my thaumaturgia. <laughs> <laughs> Douglas, sal uh, Douglas points a finger at the salamander because he knows it's not supposed to be there and he goes... Wrong. The salamander looks up at you with its golden eyes. If you didn't know any better, you could almost say that it was smiling at you. Then it opens its mouth and it says, It's good for you to be on guard on a night like this. And Emily draws her sword. Suddenly, a large cloud of fire and smoke explodes. From where the salamander was sta was standing, and as it clears away, you find a very familiar, dark-haired woman standing where the salamander had been. It is good to see you again, meeting me in Monstieri. So I wish it was under better circumstances. Well, yes. Considering what happened last year, it's uh, it's hard to get away from our parents this time. Not mine. My guy was cool with it. <laughs> it's like mine really gives a toss about what I do anymore. It's just the show must go on, the show must go on, the show must bloody go on! Well, uh, Calliope kind of looks at Cyrus and then looks at the, other, at the others. I hope he is alright, because we are... For lack of a better, <clears throat> lack of a better term, we are entering the belly of the beast. Right, Cyrus. Do you have any? Do you have any alcoholic drinks on you? Oh, I've only got uh, maybe one. Can I see it? Fine. At least you care more than my father does. No, baby. Yeah. Alex Alexander takes the takes the bottle. Opens it and then just starts pouring it on the floor. What's he? That you're madman! You're madman! How am I supposed to cope now? Hands up! He 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 hands the bottle back to him. It's just I'm not playing games anymore. We are trying to save someone. Who said I was playing? <laughs> One more thing I must check. Matthew, you still have that book that you found at the carnival last year, don't you? Oh, yes, you mean this one? Yes. Produces it from his coat pocket. Good. Hold on to it. We All need right. to keep that safe. There might be others that will be looking for it on a night like this. But now, we don't have a lot of time. If we have any hope of saving Hazel from a fate worse than death, we must leave now. Are you, are you ready? Yes. Felix and the others, all of you. <sighs> Hazel. <clears throat> Oh, why the hell not? For Hazel. <laughs> Matthew, Matthew's just twirling the book between his fingers like it's a playing card, and then flicks it into the coat. All right, let's do it. Sir, Hazel. No. Very good. Very good, Douglas. For Hazel. That's my heart. <laughs> oh, oh, ow. Yeah, that's gonna kill us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Calliope walks over to an old oak tree, one that has been familiar to you since childhood. 
She places her hands on it and closes her eyes and begins chanting in another language. All of a sudden, all of the sounds in the area stop. No wind, no insects, nothing. The only thing you can hear is the sound of your own breathing. Then, a low creaking noise comes from the tree. It gets louder and louder as the trunk begins to split open, wider and wider. Inside the tree, you see a swirling void filled with mists and stars. Calliope looks af up at you. I will follow after you so I can close the portal once we're in. All in the village, get anything you think would be helpful. The shops and the taverns will only be open as long as the sun is up. I'll remain in my salamander form. The villagers won't help you if I'm there. She steps to the side and gestures you in. Uh, Matthew walks forward a bit, turns around, does a salute while le uh, yeeting himself into the portal. <laughs> Geronimo! Geronimo! <laughs> head, yeets head first into the portal. Well, I hope none of you are claustrophobic. I he walks in. nothing no more. It's actually a lot bigger on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry! I'll say! You hear Matthew voice echo throughout it. <laughs> uh, Emily takes a very deep breath, also rolls her eyes, and takes Douglas's hand. <laughs> <laughs> Douglas actually doesn't take your hand, he actually uh, snuggles up to your whole side. Oh! oh <laughs> you're um. killing me, Finn! Okay. <laughs> my teeth. Yeah. <laughs> I, wanna, I just want to pick Douglas up now. Oh, I'm thinking back. I thought of something terrible. What? But it what? would be very, very fun. What? Uh, while you're having this conversation about whether or not to get into the portal, what? I summon Cletus, and he just grabs you and eats you both in. <laughs> 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 Prepare to get Cletus. Also, Cletus the uh, Cletus does a couple of like heroic, like get pumped poses, and he also puts his tail underneath his nose like he's got a tough mustache. I imagine nice. at, while he's doing this, Cletus then picks up Chester and he's like, assume position. He That's throws nice. them like a football toward Douglas, <laughs> lands on him, and then Cletus is satisfied. He is then dismissed. Cletus McYetus! He is then dismissed of his duties now that they are now in the portal. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Cletus. Cyrus just half heartedly strolls in. Yeah. <laughs> So Everybody's in. Adventure. Yay! Yeah. Everyone's in. Everyone. Uh, before before uh, Xander goes in, he looks towards a Calliope. Be honest with me. What are our chances of success? I say it's about fifty-fifty right now. We might be able to get some supplies that give us a bit of an edge, but. Like I said before, this is not going to be easy. We are in their territory. Uh, that better than I was hoping. Strangely, in a slightly different voice, I have also arranged for some help when we arrive. But even then, we may not be as prepared as I would like. All right. It's better than I, better chances than I was hoping. He walks in. All right. As you step through the portal, you feel a light and pleasant feeling, almost as if you're walking on the clouds. The worries and fears that you had before seem to have melted away. From behind you, you hear the portal close. Calliope steps to the front of the group and looks at you all. Let's keep a steady pace. It's not dangerous here, but this is the place between sleep and consciousness. You can very easily lose yourselves and not want to leave. And that will not be helpful to anyone in the slightest. Yeah, oh, no. just vibing with a moonwalk in the background, like... <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, me and my guardian go here all the time. It's great. Just oh no. I'm becoming more aware. Make it stop. You can also, at the same time, kind of hear the sound of children laughing and, like, having a good time. <laughs> These are the children who are already asleep. They're in the dream world. But please, let's make haste and keep going. Right. As we're walking, uh, uh, Xander's going to ask, uh, no, uh, ask another question. So, wait. If we're here, can we actually interact with people in their dreams? There's a possibility. If they come up to this level, Cap. Level? Like I said, it is the in-between. Hmm. You know how sometimes you are awake, but not fully awake. That is where we are. So, like, trance? No, no, no. I think it's lucid dreaming? Close on both starts. You feel like you can wake up, but it takes a lot of effort to wake up. If that uh. makes sense. Okay, yeah, I don't think there's a word for that. At least I'm not, not that I'm aware of, but yeah, I think I get what you're saying. But this on a... why we call it the in-between. Hmm. All right, well, I'd rather not risk it, risk interacting with people while we're here, though. And as you follow Calliope, you can feel yourselves getting more and more relaxed. Uh, I need everyone to roll a wisdom save. Ooh, fun. Yeah, wisdom <laughs> save, not the wisdom what? check. So it'll be the... Okay. It'll be the one, it'll be the one off to the... S slightly off to the side... So like not your big numbers, but like the ones what? it says saving throws. Oh, oh dear. With him save. Uh, okay. Okay, I... Cyrus still did well. What? That's my second lowest roll. Um, I don't think you clicked the right one. I think you. No, she did. I did. Yeah, it's not the. It's not the. Wait, wait, wait. I got it. I got it. I got it. Little guys. Little guys. Here we go. Okay. So. That's everybody. All right. I'm right. to the first one. I clicked it twice. For those of you who rolled higher than a seven, you feel pleasant sleepiness come over you, but you quickly start pinching yourselves to stay awake. For those of you who rolled lower than a seven, you are still walking, but you can feel your eyelids getting heavier and heavier. Uh, Xander looks over at, towards Emily and... He he kind of he he kind of slows down his pace and walk and uh, walk, walks to her. It's kind of squeezes her shoulder a little bit. And Douglas is uh, Douglas, who's already holding on to her, kind of shakes her a little bit. Em, em, em and me, <laughs> me. I'm 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 he. I'm still here. We're almost there. Let's go just a little bit further. No. Cannot ha cannot be relaxed. Life is pain. Life is hurt. Life is betrayal. Oh. <laughs> Xander just goes over to... Ju just, uh... He, he, he just shakes his head and just says, Screw it. And he, and he hoists Emily onto his back. Oh, <laughs> The, the ground's moving. <laughs> That's the cold walking, Emily. Uh, Douglas looks up to Alex and says, Emily, okay? She'll, she'll, she'll be okay as long as we're, as long as we get out of here soon. And that, they just kind of, they just kind of get, gives himself a slap on the cheek. I don't like this. I both like and don't like this place. This is weird. Calliope <sighs> suddenly comes to a stop in front of a patch of clouds. She lifts her hands and mumbles the same words she used at the tree, and the clouds part. What Calliope quickly steps through the portal. And as you follow, follow her, any feelings of sleepiness and pleasantness leave your bodies. Huh? What? Ugh. Good boy. As you step I'm her again. As you step out of the portal, the golden light of the late evening sun on a small, rundown but homely village shines. You see, 
you take a look at Calliope only to find that she is gone. In her place, you see a red salamander. Is there anything around that would give us any sort of identification of where exactly we are? Uh... There is a sign uh, in Romanian, and if you speak, oh, what was the, what was it? Abyssal. Abyssal if you sp- if you speak Abyssal, you can speak Romanian. We we basically just took the fan- the fantasy languages and made them world languages. Yeah. So if you speak Abyssal, can anyone speak Abyssal? I know someone can. Uh, I don't Where we look for that? So, so it's on your uh, character sheet. To understand language. Yeah, it should be uh, language proficiencies. Oh wait. At the bottom left of your character sheet. That's weird. I could have sworn that. I'm looking at Douglas's. I could have sworn he had an extra one. I think he has. A, I think he has honest, understand languages. Uh, hey, on my on my skill area. Oh no, he has oh. common and dwarvish. That's what it is. It oh. doesn't say online. It just says other proficiencies and languages, and that's it. Yeah. It's, uh... Oh wait, wait, there it is. <laughs> common, dwarvish, yeah. Yeah. Dwarven is uh, German. Uh, what chat? Oh, did no one? Oh, let, did we not? Did we not have anyone speak Abyssal? I don't think anyone knows Abyssal. Oopsie. Abyssal, but I think somebody has understand languages. I think Douglas has, from I remember. Let's see, uh, it should be down here then. Just to make that thing, I click something wrong. He does have comprehend uh, languages. Oh yeah, got comprehend languages right here. All right, go ahead and use that. Yep. The sign. With your ability to comprehend languages, Douglas, the sign says the village of Villenoy. I'll put it in the chat. Yeah. I'll put it in because... Got it. Uh, Emily realizes she's being carried by Alexander and taps his shoulder like in a safari match. Tap, tap, tap. I'm good. I'm good. (laughs) You put me down. (laughs) He he, 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 he puts her down. So... Sorry, I didn't want you to fall flat on your face. No, thank I'll... you. Thank you for sparing me the embarrassment. <clears throat> she, she, she smacks her face really hard. <sighs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Um, Douglas, uh, be... Douglas tugs on uh, Emily's pant leg and points towards the village and says, Villinoy. Villinoy? It's... What's that mean, Douglas? The village is Billy Knight. I think he's what, what? That saying that's the name of the village. Yeah, it seems like it, but uh, one second. Um, Matthew takes a look around and. Like, oh, I wow. I don't know why it's doing. I know 20 Dang. is still not. I don't know why it's. it's doing why the is it doing the double advantage? Ugh, well, flipping flapper. Because on my, well, like well, I said, on my page. Know. Yeah, on my page, I'm still tagged as normal. That is yeah. weird. Either way, we'll just take the first roll, so it's yeah. uh, 20. It's still a good 20. What are you it's looking still for? It's a really good roll. Um, good roll. Like, something that would look like um, maybe, say, a shop or... Yeah, I'll say I'll say I'm looking for something that looks like a shop that is open with, like, people in it. Uh, before before that, uh, the salamander that is now that was Calliope... Uh, races over to Douglas, crawls up his pant leg, and curls up in his pocket. And you can see Chester looking down at her, trying not to have a, a an indignant stare at you are in my territory, this is my human, how dare, kind of look on his face. I am sorry, but the position of annoying talking animal has already been taken. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, my dear Chester, you've been replaced by a frog. <laughs> Um, and uh, oh. Chester, Chester crawls up on Douglas's head to try and get a little higher to assert a little more dominance. Like, doesn't matter. So um, you can tell you only have an hour or two left before sunset. You do see in front of a shop what looks like to be a shop. Douglas, you can read over the building name. It's called Hammers and Hemlock. There is a little girl playing with a ball. She looks over to you and runs over and o- runs over to your little group. Um, excuse me, why are you outside? Should we not be? No, mommy says that tonight's the night when monsters come out. So everyone stays inside from sunset to sunrise. 
I like to hide under my bed with my dollies. And from across the street, the um, the door to Hammers and Henlock opens, and a middle-aged woman looks out the door and spots the little girl. Yetta, come inside. Yes, Mama. And the girl looks up at you guys. You want to come in? I can ask Mama if you can stay tonight. Uh, Ale uh, Xander looks over at the group. Any objections? Do we need to, do we need to buy mm -hmm. anything at the market before sundown? Especially if there's going to be most. Hmm. Hello? Yep. Oh, yeah. are you talking? Sorry. No, I can am was fading in and out for me so i'm like what oh uh, he asked if he uh if he if you guys need to we need to buy anything before sun sundown are those mo God. are they even open um, um the <laughs> middle-aged woman looks out the door again and is like gesturing for you guys to come in oh well uh Xander, Xander, Xander gestures for the group to follow follow him in. Oh, why not? I'm only half conscious for all this. Tally ho! To the stranger's home we go. Inside, you see, it's it's a nice homey shop that has lots of ingredients for potions and other sorts of. It's a it's a basic herb shop with like lots of stuff you can get that kind of stuff on the other wall you see a few weapons nothing extravagant but a nice a nice assortment of weapons hanging on the wall and in the back you can hear um what sounds like a smithy working in the back welcome to hammers and hammock um yeah, we, we we make medicine and we make sharp things that i can't play with the the woman comes over to the little girl and top and just gently rubs her head is like don't bother the nice people yeah i think i appreciate you for trying but try not to bother the nice people mama can they stay can they stay with us tonight well we don't have much room to begin with there might be some more room at the inn at the uh the slaughtered lab as it's called i oh. think that you are not from here your accents are very different uh, the little girl goes upstairs, bored now because she her friends can't stay. <laughs> but the Douglas actually tries to follow her. Oh, friend! Ah, um, the little girl's like, well, I go get dollies. Be bye back. And she goes upstairs to get dolls. Ah, I guess that's the play. Uh, hmm. The woman looks up at at the other ones. Like I said, we don't have a lot of room here, but we can give you things that you may need: uh, potions, some equipment, if this is needed. And like I said, there should be some room at the slaughtered lamp. Not a lot. You might have heard my daughter say, but we don't go out at night. At least not night of all nights. Right. Um, I have a question. It's a he, it's a Xander pull, put reaches into his pocket and pulls out uh, currency. Is this good? Is this good here? We're we're really not from around here. Um, the woman picks up some of the coins and takes a bite out of it, and then looks. This should be enough. This should work. Like I said, you don't sound like you're from here. Where are you from? Um, Have you heard of the English colony of New England? Her eyes kind of widen at that. <laughs> You've because... certainly traveled quite a long way to just visit our little village. Uh, the smithy yes. noises in the back stop and in tromps a kind of a... He looks old, but you could tell that's mostly just because he's around heat and hard work and sweat all the time. He doesn't have gray hair, he has black, and his face looks sort of worn and tanned. He comes in gruffly. I heard someone might be here for purchasing items. What is this about money? Oh, we were just wondering if our money was good here. Is gold? 
uh, he lo he looks at the, the coin. It's like I. The woman I, looks I, over at the at the man, Rorik. It is fine. I checked. Fine. If you want. Um, by the way, if all of you will take a look in your inventory, you all have 50 more gold than you did last time. Yeah. Mm. That is that is what you all have earned over the last year, saving up because you thought you might need to buy tickets or go on a trip. Or mm. find something to dull the pain. <laughs> <laughs> you, fi right. you find uh, good weapons and armor here, if you wish. In that case, my good fellow, do you have anything to silence the waking nightmares of what you have been through? I don't think we have that. We don't we sell don't gun. Have... <laughs> oh my god! Jeez! <laughs> uh, pragmatic well, and, yeah, I, I and efficient. Yeah, I was gonna go. I was, I just meant something to drink. I, I, I just, I just... For drink, I, you, I for drink you go to Slaughtered Lamb. I go back to Smithy. And, uh, Cyrus, uh, oh, the woman if you looks. If you did purchase some quiet pills, that'd be great. <laughs> the woman looks over at him. You must forgive him. He's irritable about this time of year. We always try our best to keep the monsters at bay. So far, we've been doing very good. But this night's just something feels uneasy. Even more so than normal. Uh, the girl comes back with her dollies, and one of them looks like one of those, um, the cor the corn husk dolls that, uh, you weave in order to, for protection. Um, Ooh. and she, she gives the corn husk doll to Douglas. Here, you can play with this one. It keeps you safe, since you're not staying. You gonna buy everything? Mommy and Daddy sell nice things. Yes, uh, mustn't badger the customer, so... Daddy says we must be good business, my man. The business woman. Uh, the woman just gives her a, a give, walks over, just gives her a hug of just like, what am I going to do with you? <laughs> and then looks, and then looks to the group. Do you wish to purchase anything? We have potions for health. We have potions for sleep. We have bandages, hunting knives, hatchets, and leather armor. And I do believe. We man and she leans in. Don't tell anyone this, but we managed to snag ourselves some silver and mix that with some of our weapons. So it could come in handy on a night like this. Oh, uh, do you happen to have an axe? I do have a hatchet. That'll be twelve gold pieces. Um, <laughs> does the hatchet have any silver in it? Yes, it does. It is lining the blade. Ah, uh, I will take one. Right? Um, uh, so... Do you have a question? Um, oh, sorry. Yes? I was gonna say one question. I was gonna immediately equip... Uh, I was gonna immediately equip it. Are the stats basically the same as a hand axe? One second. Silver? No, hang on. I'm, I'm, I'm getting it for you. I'm gonna put it on your character sheet. It'll be a plus two. Yeah, because of the silver. Did I already give you a plus two? Whoops. Oh well. I am a bit shit. I'm still a bit shaken up, but um, I'm looking to upgrade a aid my hand crossbow. Would you happen to have anything of that nature? Hmm. If we do sell some arrows, there would be about one gold piece each. Hmm. Actually, you you hear the old man call, make it one gold piece for two. I don't want anyone. I don't want anyone else dying using my product. It's bad for business. The woman rolls her eyes. Fine. One gold piece for two items, for two arrows. Uh, Emily pulls out her longsword. DM, did it have any silver in it at any point? Nope. No. You have a, okay. just a standard sword. Um, but Emily you... pulls it out, and... Um... She realizes that, oh, right, women, swords, hmm, not normal in her village, but... <clears throat> the, the woman looks at her and says, Doesn't bother me that the woman is handling a sword. 
in this day and age with monsters running around, you need to do everything you can to protect yourself. Don't they do that in the colonies? Um, well, uh, she kind of rubs her head. It's frowned upon, let's just say that. Oh, um, sorry. we don't usually have monsters to deal with. Yeah, we be oh, you knew. Dead. Um, it's just a regular longsword, but considering you mentioned silver and other points of making them stronger, considering you do, in fact, have monsters out here, um, anything you can do with this? She looks at the sword. Well, I don't know how long we could, with this, with Roderick working the smith. I could, however, rub some wolfsbane on it, and it would help prepare your sword for any werewolves out there. It's also good for vampires, too. Can I get that too? I have a, I have a, he pulls out his giant great axe. He, he pulls out his great axe. Uh, lumberjack family. Anything <laughs> special about the arrows? The arrows are silver tipped. I'll take 12. 12, okay. So six gold pieces out of you. And then give me a minute. I'm going to give you some, let me see if I can find some flavored crossbow bolts. Okay. Oh, also a DM question. Uh, yeah. When the girl came down, uh, she gave obviously she gave um, Douglas a doll. Did she have one as well? Hmm? Uh, yeah, she had two. Got it. And okay, because you... um, one while was... Douglas is quietly knitting in the corner, Chester actually grabs some money out of Douglas's pocket, puts it on the table, and actually points to try and buy the hunting knife. <laughs> that she looks like down this. at the squirrel and then looks and goes, "It might be a little too big for you." And then Chester tries to Chester tries to flex his little muscles, but they just kind of poof up with fluff. He is a valiant knight, I assure you. <laughs> All right, Cyrus, you should have in your character sheet now silver twelve silver tip crossbow bolts. <laughs> the woman turns to Alexander and to um, Emily. I should be able to get the herbs on your sword before sunrise. It may take me a little bit to mix it, but it should only be three gold pieces per weapon. Please, mm -hmm. and I'd also like two uh, healing potions, please. All I right. was going to ask. I was going to ask for the exact same thing. All right. Oh, you <laughs> four healing potions. Uh, two for me, two for him, please. All right, that will be fourteen gold pieces each. All right. Well, actually, 17 each with their herbs. Oh, uh, yeah, 17 each. A question for DM. Yes? I don't actually see my crossbow in my attack thing. Oh, hang on one second. Let me let me fiddle with it. Okay. Uh, And then I got to pull you up. I don't know why. You had a, you had a hand crossbow, right? Yep. All right. All right. The woman hands four healing potions to uh, Alexander and to Emily. Yeah, two. Looks, oh, two. That's a, well. She hands. There's four. There's two for each. Yeah, I know. Just four, four, four or two. <laughs> there's four in total, and she hands yeah. them to you guys. Each of you has like, two. All right. All right. Give if me a second. If you just leave your weapons here, they should be done in about 30 minutes or so. In the meantime, you could go to the Slot of Lamb, maybe get something to eat, book a room, and you can come back just as long as you come back before sundown. All right. <sighs> All right. I have put two potions of healing in uh, Alexander's inventory and two in Emily's. Um, uh, I, see, I see my push of healing, but it only says one. I just put... I put two. I am frustrated. Where? Where is it? Where do I see this? Oh, there's two of them. Like... There's one. Okay, so go down to your, your the bottom of your inventory. Oh, there's two. I don't understand no. why that is, but okay, whatever. Uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. But anyway. It's all good. And she looks to the rest of you. Is there anything else we can help you with before you leave? Um, I am. No, oh, sorry. Go ahead. You go first. You go first. Oh, oh, okay. Um, 
I am. She Emily is debating the leather armor at the moment. Uh, Emily, you have uh, currently on you chainmail. Oh, and a shield. Your AC, your AC is eighteen. You're okay. You're okay, dear. <laughs> um, okay. Is the shield made of uh, silver? Uh, the shield is made of iron. Ah, I was gonna ask. Do you think we need armor upgrades? Um, currently, I'll I'll tell you what you guys have: Matthew, Cyrus, and Douglas. Okay, Douglas, you have, in regards to armor. Leather armor. Cyrus, okay. you have... Leather armor. Matthew, you have... Leather armor. This le These leathers is a leather armor plus two. So it would give you a little bit of uh, extra armor. Uh, how much are they again? 30. They are 30 gold pieces. You know what? I'll upgrade. Uh, yeah, I'll take one. Okay. Actually, <laughs> Alexander... Oh, wait. Yeah, you're a bar barbarian. You don't have armor. <laughs> hmm. I am the armor. <laughs> you are the armor! <laughs> <laughs> Shut up and take my gold. All right. One second. Let me, let me pull it up. So... Make sure you equip that. Warning, AC is not is not incorrect. Unequip extra armor or shield from item details. Yeah, just uh une okay, so I'll just unequip it for you. Give me a second. There we go. There we go. And there we go. Now you all have updated our ACs. Matthew, you have 16. Douglas has 15. And Cyrus has 17. You guys are a little buffer now. Take out 30 gold from your little inventory things, okay? Done. All right. Make it rain um. with the gold. All righty. Uh, okay, before we go, can I do one last thing? Sure. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so Douglas has been... He's been kind of knitting, and knitting in the corner this whole time. Uh, he... Walks over to, uh, he walks over to Chester, he takes some of the money back, he puts it in his pocket, and leaves just enough for a single sleep potion, and he actually points it out on the shelf, and Chester just kind of pouts and says, okay, I guess we'll take that. <laughs> you, you wish to, you wish to purchase the sleep potion, little one? Hmm. All right, then. She grabs the bottle and hands it to you while taking the coins. Thank you very much. So what this is going to do is basically it's a potion version of the sleep spell. So basically one time use, you can use the sleep spell on anyone who's like, who can drink that poison. I mean, potion. Got it. Okay. So I'm just going to put the sleep spell in your compendium, but that's just what it does. It's a one time sleep For spell. For some reason, I just have imagined that it, I imagine it has like a little squirt bot. It's like a squirt bottle. It's like sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Or like like from uh, uh, Green Goblin from Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, so I'm also well, gonna. Uh, are we coming? Are we coming back here or? Uh, just yeah. just briefly to pick up the weapons. Okay, because yes. there's one nice thing I want to do before we leave this place for good. <laughs> okay. 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 Like I said, do give me us about thirty minutes to get your weapons completely um, coated in the wolf spain. What? Um, like I said, you can go to the Slaughtered Lamb. That'll probably be the only place that's open. Going to any other place, they probably won't let you in. Like I said, nobody is open once the sun goes down. Out of character. Out of character. Oh my god, the Slaughtered Lamb! Are you kidding me? <laughs> really? If well, you that's are in the Highlands of London, you know. Yes, I know. I also know they don't like trespassers and newbies, and th that's like that's their pub. Do not tick them off. <laughs> All right. So you step out onto back onto the streets of Illinois, and it's kind of obvious which one is the slaughtered lamb. 
it has um a sword through a leg of lamb so you could kind of see it on the sign without the comprehend languages but since Douglas has that on he could see the slaughtered lamb do you guys head for it uh yes yes we do <laughs> As you walk into the tavern, you see lots of people huddled and talking to each other in little pods. By a large fireplace, you see a few minstrels playing a nice soothing tune on their guitars and flutes. In another corner, you see a hooded figure in a dark cloak nursing a mug of what you assume to be ale. A few heads turn in your direction as you come in, and you get a couple of strange looks. It's a smaller town, and you are definitely outsiders and children to boot. But no one attempts to make you leave, and they quickly return to their conversations. The atmosphere is, for the most part, cheerful, but you can't help but feel that there is, underneath of it, there is a hint of anxiety and tension. What do you do? Well, first we need to look to try and see whoever seems to own this place and ask them if we can get a room. There is a gentleman, there are two people behind the bar. Either of them could be the owner. But with the way that the gentleman is taking the money, you assume it's probably him. Got it. Okay. And from Douglas's pocket, when Alexander mentioned room, you can see Calliope's salamander head poke out, shake, and then go back into the pocket. D Douglas actually takes that as a uh, as a direction, as if they're in the wrong place, and he almost tries to exit. <laughs> <laughs> well, where else can we go? With as quietly as a salamander could, he whispered, "We don't have time to stay the night. We will need to press forward. You can ask him for directions to the fortress." And then she quickly hides back in the pocket to avoid being spotted by the waitress that's moving around. All right, well. All right, so who wants to go and try and gather information? Matthew, you, you and I want to do that. Sure. All right. Maybe ask what's on the ball too. No, Cyrus. Oh. Especially. <laughs> God dang it. <laughs> Look, especially remember the last time we ate something that we shouldn't have. Oh yes, I remember that. I'm still remembering that. I can't stop remembering that. That's the problem. Uh. Um, <clears throat> she, she calls to the gentleman. Uh, the gentleman quickly rushes over. Oh, I'm so sorry. Sorry to keep you waiting. As you can tell, we are a little packed more than normal for, of course, the night of all nights. How can I help you? Oh, no, no trouble at all. Um, <clears throat> hi. Um, we are looking for, um, I'll put it in the chat for you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, sorry, it's already there. <laughs> I'm just zoning out. Okay. Oh, we're looking for the Fortress of Deva. As soon as the words the Fortress of Deva uh, are leave your lips, a thick silence falls over the tavern and all of the minstrels stop playing and everybody turns to look at you. The waitress dropped her tray of drinks. The, um... The tavern keeper collects himself. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I must not have heard you right. You, you weren't looking for the fortress, were you? Yes. You could start seeing some of the women around starting to cross themselves. The tavern 
gamekeeper quickly walks around the bar to get to you. No, 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 no. You mustn't go there. Especially tonight of all nights. Most of the patrons tonight are here for sanctuary from the nightmares that come from that cursed place. The creatures who walk in the night and feed on the blood of the living. No, you must stay here for the night. I have some rooms that I can offer you. Better to stay here, where it is safe. <sighs> Sir, I understand that. But we, we don't have time. Our friend is in trouble. The tavern keeper gives you another pleading look. away our lives. If your friend is in that place, they are either dead or one of them, and they wouldn't want you to throw your lives away on a fool's errand. Uh, Emily elbows Matthew, because she's feeling a yeah, little Matthew, awkward. Matthew's, mo Matthew's mulling about for a sec, and then um, uh, proceeds to uh, look him in the eyes very sincerely and say, Sir, I, oh, 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 oh. sir, I understand, but would you also happen to believe that we're just weary travelers going through? If we are lost, it is not your problem, and if we succeed, then you will never have a problem again. Okay, give me a minute. I'm gonna <laughs> have to. I'm gonna have to ro roll against that. What is the DC on here? Wisdom it's saving 15. throw. Fifteen. So um, he does not have advantage because we are not fighting him. No, we do not. <laughs> I'll do five. A calm look washes over the tavern keeper, but he still has this kind of pitying look as he looks at you. But he says, "You just go through the forest on the west and on the east entrance. You follow the moon, and you will be able to find it." Victor, do what are you doing? He shakes his head as if, like, coming out of a cloud. I, I, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I, I have no idea what the, why I said that. Oh, my goodness. I, 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 I need to sit down. And he quickly goes back behind the bar and just sits behind the bar. Uh, Matthew casually lifts the spell for... Casually lifts the spell and then taps him on the shoulder. Good. Let's go. Um... <laughs> back up. Everybody... Everybody is staring at you as you are leaving, and you can hear some people say, those poor dears, as you pass by. But just as Emily is about to leave you here... Wait, wait, please. An elderly woman walks over to Emily, holding a small crucifix. If you must go, my dear, then wear this for your mother's sake. It will protect you. Um, Emily gives a soft, gentle smile, nods, and takes it and puts it around her neck. The elderly woman also goes up to Matt. Um, oh, go ahead and say what you're going to say. Um, she was just going to say, please understand. I don't think any of us could live with ourselves if we didn't try. You are a good, sweet little thing. She kisses the top of your head in that grandma kind of way. Oh, I am cute. She then goes over to Matthew. You. She, gra she grabbed some of the bread that was at their table. Just in case you all get hungry along the way. It's good bread. My grandson makes it for the tavern and everyone else in town. Just please be careful. I know none of us... Uh, least of all I can stop you. Much appreciated. What was that you said about the, 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 Matthew, the look on Matthew's face seems genuine. No. Get. Everybody has a weakness for grandma. Yay. <laughs> grandma. Uh, Ari, I just sent you something just so you know. What? I just sent you something. Cool. All right. So as you guys walk back to the group, everybody's conversations start to like start up again, but you can still see a few people crossing themselves and stealing a few looks at your guys' directions. Okay. Uh, Emily goes up to Alexander, um, Cyrus, and Douglas. Do we know where well, he is? 
Yeah. <sighs> I mean, good news. Um, we know how to get there. The bad news is they clearly don't want us to go. Um, the tell, by the way, they won't stop staring. It's rude to stab! A few people look away as you shout at them. It's like, ah, I'm sorry! <laughs> Thank you! They specifically said to follow the road, follow the moon into the forest. Of course it would be something like that. Bur 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 Hazel. It's That's right, Douglas for Hazel. Uh, Emily is gripping the cross around her neck, though. Hmm. All right, well... Got what we came here. Got what we came here for. Shall we head back to that other shop? The uh, hammers and hemlock. Do you think they'll be done? They said they would be done till morning, but we don't have time for that. I thought they said thirty minutes. Yeah, yeah they did oh. say thirty minutes. It's it's oh, been about a it's it's been approximately thirty minutes now. Okay. Right. Oh, that's convenient. Really <laughs> right. You had to Let's walk go. a bit. All right. So moving back.